All right, mistake admitting time. Two major mistakes. Well, one major mistake, one minor mistake. The major mistake is I'm hot. It's 100 degrees in this damn hangar. Whew. Can't do much about that mistake. The second mistake I made is with these holes. So if you recall, we were supposed to leave several of the holes across the back baffle uncountersunk to make sure that everything lines up uh, when we're sealing the tank. And then we go back after the fact, countersink those down and then set the rivets per normal. Well, the mistake I made was I swapped out the number uh, 40 or number 30 countersink with the number 40 countersink, which is the correct hole without changing the depth. So I over countersunk. I, I countersunk the crap out of it. Um, oops. It's okay. First of all, always recheck your calibrations. Make sure don't go blindly because this mistake will happen. But uh, easy to fix. All I did was I just drilled it up to the slightly larger hole. And instead of using the three 3.5 rivet, I used a 4.4. Uh, I don't have a 4 3.5. So um, super, super easy. I think the results look fine. Also, this is on the bottom of the, the tank uh, under the wing. So most likely no one will ever know unless you go looking for it. And if you go looking for it, I'll know you watch this video. Anyways, guys, mistakes are going to happen. No big deal. So once I fixed that minor error, um, I then went on and worked on sealing the tank a little further. So I've got the one tank that's already sealed. There's still some rivets that are exposed. I wanted to add a little more pro seal on the outside of those to make sure they're fully sealed. Uh, and then I wanted to start working on just my water test of the tank that has yet to be sealed. So I haven't really just covered this well. Um, how I was, how I envisioned doing the leak test was first you, you build the tank, you get it to where you think it's sealed with the back off, that back baffle. Fill it full of water, let it sit for a couple days and see if any, anything leaks out. Of course, nothing did on the first tank. Then seal it by putting the back baffle on and then blow it up using, you know, just air pressure and see if, it, if any air escapes, see if that works. Once that is successful, then it's a matter of pouring actual fuel that's going to live in there in there and let that sit for a little while and see if any leaks form. Um, that's kind of the method I've been going, kind of a three part test. And I'm on part two of my one tank and part one of my other. And as you can see here in this picture, uh, part one had a failure for my other tank. I, I had a little hole uh, way down deep in there. You can see that there's just a little bit of a gap that I hadn't fully uh, 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 sealed with the pro seal. I mean, looking at it, it's obvious, right? But for whatever reason, I missed it. So I went back through and I gooped on pro seal deep down in there and got it in, got it sealed. And now I'm letting that set. Same thing with this picture of this tank. That's all, all that is pro new pro seal that I'm letting set. So while the pro seal is setting, um, I'm going to start working on the flaps. So here I am up in my wood shop. You guys may remember this from, from the early days. I used to come up here all the time and work on stuff. Uh, and it just so happens that I'm gonna be doing some a little bit of work up here because we have to make, as part of the flaps, a way to hold the flaps. Now up to now, I've been using uh, these jigs that I've made that are just have a strap uh, because it really didn't matter how uh, the, the part sat in there, whereas these have a very specific shape. And if I put them in that jig, they're always going to go thunk against one side. There's no way to hold them up uh, because of this, this shape. So this time I do actually need to make actual holders, if you will. Um, so to that end, what I did is I took um, this guy right here, this end piece, and... <clears throat> took a photocopy of it basically I put it in my scanner scanned it and created a pattern for my CNC so what I did is I, I basically I made a holder right and it <laughs> I was a little too accurate in this piece to here um, that metal fits perfectly my CNC works well uh, but it means of course if you can see here now with an actual rib attached there's no way in hell I would I can't even get this rib in there let alone if it had skin right so I made them bigger and I've recut them so that now it will fit with a goodly amount of space on either side. 
that's enough space for me to not only put the skin in there, but to put like a felt padding or something like that, like a furniture mover pad, that sticky pad that I can stick in there. So these will then sit exactly where I want. And so now I'm just printing up a bunch of these with my, my uh, little inventable CNC. Uh, you need six of them. So that's what I'm doing up here. Hey guys, I interrupt this regularly scheduled program to bring you the update that I am on my way to pick up my fuselage. Heading there now. Uh, I gotta go over the mountain into Tennessee to pick it up. It's at my dad's house. And I will try to film that a little bit so you can see what, see what that looks like, how it comes. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Next bit of the adventure is arriving today. All right, so I got the call. I went over to my dad's house and uh, a little while later, the truck driver showed up. He was in a rider rental truck. He said that his truck that he normally delivers in, the air condition had gone out and they didn't want him to go out in that truck because it was hot and it is hot. It was 90 something degrees out there. Good thing we weren't having to push around a big heavy crate like that one. That crate is eight feet long by three and a half feet tall by four feet wide and weighs well over 500 pounds. It's actually about four feet tall if you consider the pallet on the bottom. Uh, now, thankfully, we ended up taking that pallet off and I just sent that pallet with him. He said he could use it, so I, I didn't wanna have to deal with it. But getting it off the truck sucked. Um, you know, those, those lift gates on the back of those trucks are only about four feet wide. And so it's an eight foot, you know, piece of, you know, piece of cargo coming off there. I don't think they think about this when they're putting it on the truck, you know, they're delivering it at, or they're, they're putting it on the truck rather, you know, someplace where they can just drive on with a forklift but to, to get it off. You know, if you're, especially if you tell them you need a lift gate, it has to go on that lift gate and then lower to the ground and it's an eight foot long grate. Um, so we did the best we could, but you can see we had it hanging over the edge quite a bit in order to get it down. Now, thankfully that guy is an old hand at moving and he, he was telling me that he's moved bigger and heavier stuff than this. There's be no problem. It was really helpful. Uh, thank you very much, dude. I appreciate it. You're the man. And uh, yeah, then it was just a matter of driving home with it and I did not drive fast. The crate looks good. Uh, I went around and looked on all sides. I only saw one little minor blemish, hardly worth mentioning. I didn't actually see it uh, when I inspected the crate the first time until after the guy left, and then I noticed it. So I did not mark it down, unfortunately. But uh, I'm going to go through here soon and start digging through the crate and seeing what we got. Here, I thought I was going to embarrass myself backing that thing up. I wasn't too bad. Well, here we are. We've got, we've got the uh, the fuselage in its in its crate still on my trusty trusty trailer here, but it's backed in. We're ready to go. Uh, I think everything looks good. Uh, the only thing that I don't like is now I only have a few days. You only have five days uh, according to the new rules to make sure that there's no damage that happened to this during shipping. Um, I've gone around and walked around a number of times. And the only place that I see any kind of damage at all to the exterior of the crate is a little spot over there where it just looks like it kind of bumped into something. It doesn't even look like it, it penetrated all the wood. It just looks like it compressed the wood a little bit. Uh, other than that, I really don't see any damage to the box. This box is pretty damn sturdy. So awesome. Uh, but still, I have five days to get in there to make sure everything's kosher and file a complaint if I need to, uh, or I, I guess I'm just out the money at that point, right? If it's some major piece that's damaged and you say you wait till the sixth day and you didn't, you didn't complain, well, tough shit. <laughs> that sucks. So I'm gonna get all the straps off, gonna uh, you know, get the heavy stuff off here and then open up the box and see what I can see. This is about the point at which I realized I needed to kind of move things around. Um, so you can see right here in this picture, that's the, the little dent, if you will, in the exterior of the box. Like I said, I don't even think it pushed all the way through the wood. Once I get the box open, I'll look inside. Of course, the helicopter's taking off because I'm doing an overlay. <sighs> but I think, um, I think I need to move some stuff around in my shop. You know, I've got I've got this tool area over here that I kind of want to move to a different part, uh, and and just 
just neaten and tidy things up. So that is also something I'm gonna do over the course of this next little bit of video. Uh, I just need to move things around and get situated and then start the inventory process. All right, well, here it is. Everything's open. Um, it's packed really tightly and somewhat loosely. Uh, everything is jammed in here like nothing's going to move, but it's, there's a lot of space in the box. More space in this box than I think in any of the previous boxes, and I guess that's just due to the shapes of all the items. Uh, now, part of me wishes like hell I could just leave it in this box in this condition without inventorying or anything. Um, until I'm ready to get there. But unfortunately, got to inventory and I've got to go through and make sure there's no damage. I did look down at that one end where we saw that little hole, that little poke, and it does look like it actually poked through the wood slightly or just pushed the wood a little bit, but there's nothing anywhere near it. So it, it's fine. Um, I do have the fuselage inventory packet. It's the very first thing that was taped up to this, this angle aluminum, which is bent to hell. I hope that's the shape it's supposed to be in. Um, so I'm going to go through and try to inventory everything and go from there. Uh, this, in, this bend on this angle aluminum, even if it's, uh, I mean, it's obviously, this is how they put, packed it in here. So it's meant to be in this shape. Uh, we may not be using it exactly like this, or we, we may be having to change the shape or something else. Who knows? It's, it's, it's probably fine. But um, other than that, now I get to go through and slowly pull all the crap out, disassemble this box as best I can, and then find a place to stow all this stuff in here. So, good times. There's a lot. This is a big box. You, you wouldn't think, but there's a million little items in here. So, I guess it's all underneath this canopy. Good times. Well, there you go in the background, I'm unloading that big thing. And at this point, as I record this, I've got that giant crate completely unloaded and I've got all the sub kits kind of strategically placed around. I have not gone through and pulled apart each sub kit to start doing the inventory. Uh, this initial time, what I'm looking for is any damage to the stuff so I can file a complaint against the shipper uh, if there is any. I got nothing. Uh, whoever the, the crate pack master is at Vans Aircraft, stand proud, man. You did a great job. Uh, I also think you have investment in duct tape and paper because or stock or something because you use a lot. <laughs> but it, it's all come together nicely. Um, the next step, I'm going to go through and start actually inventorying everything and then leave it alone. Get back to working on the wings. I got to finish closing my tanks and start working on the flaps, which is what you're going to see next. So yeah, awesome. That big ass box was mostly air inside. I mean, it, it, I understand why it's as big. That fuselage piece, the top fuselage piece is huge. Um, I would... I, I, Part of me thinks they should try to figure out a way to ship those separately in two separate boxes just so they're not quite as big, but that piece is so big that I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that would look. I don't know that that would be even be possible at that point. So maybe the, the giant box is the right way to go. They've been doing this a while, so it probably is. So anyways, I can ramble forever, guys. Uh, that's where I'm going to end this one. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. I can't wait to actually get to start work on the fuselage. Uh, for now, though, I got to get back to the wings and try to kick those out. I hope to have those done within a month so I can then start working on the fuselage. Uh, but if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor and hit that like button down there or subscribe. And if you want to receive notifications every time I up the channel, uh, upload to the channel, click the bell. And if you really like what I'm doing, if you jump over to my Patreon page for as little as a dollar a month, you could support this channel. But think of it as just buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. And finally, I did get a couple more people that have purchased Vans aircrafts. These two people right here, I just recently got their names. Uh, awesome. What a cool thing. You guys, if you want to build an aircraft, you can. If you use my builder's number, which is down in the, uh, down in the comments below, Vans will send me $100 as a hundred bucks as a thank you. It's no money out of your pocket. Thanks, guys. See you next time. What the? Oh. Oh. Well, hey there, little one. Oh, come on. You can make it. Go on. There you go. Bye-bye.